could also let you, uh, we're also going to cover a couple of these other options up here we didn't get to earlier. Um, the first one here is adjust. Adjust lets you move a point much like you would in your car. And what we showed you before, if you make a change, it would only change the one point. But adjust actually moves, let's say if you want to adjust this point here, uh, shim out your, your upper arms. It will move this point out, but keep the length here the same and your spindle the same, and that will actually move the ball joint out. And depending on the new ball joint location, will be depend on will be exactly like it would be in the car based on the spindle length. It will tilt the tire out. Camber will change, and because the tire is tilted out, it will actually raise this side of the car a little bit. And a lot of points are going to move just like it would in your real car. This is a very powerful feature. And I'll show you how you can do some things here with this. Uh, we're going to shift the left arm in or out. You could have done it up or down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to add some shims, add some standard shims. I'm going to add a 1 16th inch spring or shim and two eighth inch shims. That's how much we're shimming it now. And it's showing you here's what it's going to estimate the new camber to have been by doing that. Okay. And if we do it on the front also, something different, we're going to add shims. Or let's say we're going to remove shims just to do something really different. And I'm going to pull out one eighth inch shim. And you can see here what it's showing you. It's showing the total distance things that move front and rear. Front, rear. And it's showing you an estimate of what the new camber would be compared to the current camber and how caster has changed. Um, also, now we're doing this on the left side, so it's only showing you what the left side caster and camber would be. But let's say this is what you wanted to do and you use this. I'm going to use that. And if you go down in here, you should see that the camber on the left and caster would be matching what happened from that change. There's other things you can do here and adjust also. You can adjust ride height by changing things, uh, changing spindle drop on the left side only. And again, it's telling you a lot some options there. But anyway, a lot of things you can do here, and the point is, a lot of things will move like it should in the real car. Do your wheel offsets. You can move your, your steering. This one here is more for the, the Nextel Cup guys. Uh, they have a special way of measuring their arms, and this is a way to, uh, anyway, to signify an arm change, and they have a very special way, a, a jig for measuring the arms and stuff. But it will do things much the same way. Uh, let me screen specs, the action. New length is, uh, I'm not sure what the current length is, so I'm going to be screwed up on this, would be, let's say, 13, and the new offset is 1. And it's showing you here the change in length was huge, so I've got this thing wrong, and the change in offset. So I'm signifying a big change here. Uh, I don't want to use that. But anyway, if you do the things right, that's a real useful function for the, uh, the Bush and the Nextel Cup teams. Another thing here is optimize. Optimize, you, there's two ways you can optimize. Um, we talked about the front to rear weight or the weight transfer happening from the inside to the outside tires in a churn and how much is happening in the front and how much is happening in the rear. Optimize lets you find a balance or a change in that automatically so you don't have to do a bunch of cut and try. And you can see here what it says. What do you, our current front to rear lo, lateral load distribution, this FLLD, is about 50%. The program is suggesting this to be 56%. And that's based on, you can see down here, the vehicle's front percent weight is 51% now. And it said typically you want this FLLD, the weight transfer in the front, to be about five percentage points higher than that. And that makes um, a more drivable car. It may not be theoretically ideal, but it is what most drivers would like how the car to feel. And it says, okay, what do you want to adjust to get there? And I'm going to say, um, we could adjust the rear roll bar. Let's try it. Let's see if we can adjust the rear roll bar to get us to this ideal or theoretically ideal 56%. Mm -hmm. And it says, oh, we can't do it because the bar has been set to none. So we have to make sure we put a bar in there first. But let's say if we got a front roll bar, can we do it? And it can. It says the current front roll bar is 150 pounds. 
we'd have to go up to about a 720 pound bar to do that. And you might say, oh, let's, let's do it. That might be a way of doing it. Or you could say another option is let's change the rear roll center height. And it says that's another way of doing it. It says currently the rear roll center is about a 10.9 inch off the ground. And it says if you dropped it at 8.5 inches off the ground, you would change its lateral load distribution from about 50 up to 56%, which it says either one of these would be something to try to get this car in a position that the program believes would be a more balanced handling of a car. So let's say you want to keep that. We're going to change this rear roll center height and we say, okay, mm -hmm. keep that. And it says you want to, yep, I want to do it automatically. I didn't even read what that was. And let's see what happened over here. We didn't look at this first, but I mean, I assume this roll, this uh, panard bar was higher before. And now it's lower. It's down now at this, uh, let's see if we can see it here. Where is, there it is. The height is 8.45 now. And you go down in here, you can say it's calling it neutral because it got this 56 to 44%, which it thought would be better. Now, if you changed your front rear weight distribution, this idea would change. And it turns out, it may turn out you don't even like this. You like uh, a car that the program thinks has a mild amount of oversteer or a mild amount of understeer. Uh, you might want to be 58% instead of 56%. So a lot of this is driver preference. But with the program knowing nothing else about your car, this is what it would suggest to do.